Hello everyone and welcome to another video on our channel Learn at No Star. In today's video, we are going to be solving two SQL problems that require us to identify how many times a number occurs consecutively in the data. So let's get started. The first problem is actually a lead code problem and it's a simple query which requires us to find out all the numbers that appear at least three times consecutively in the table logs and they have defined the structure for this table so there are two columns in this table id and number id is an auto increment column that means it's kind of an identity column so it will take values one two three four incrementally and then you have a column number which is what we need to count on how many times the same number appears so if there's some data like this in this table, so if your number occurs three times consecutively, for example, one over here occurs three times consecutively, then you have to identify this number and you do not have need to output all the other numbers in the table. So I'm going to replicate these tables in our environment. I have the create and insert scripts, which I would be sharing with you in the description, in the link in the description box. So let's go ahead and create the logs table. So this table has been created and insert the same values as were provided in the example. So the values have been inserted. So now if I do a select star on the logs table, I will be getting the data. And now I'm ready to write the SQL query. So the SQL query asks us to find out those numbers which occur at least three times consecutively in this data. So as you can see over here, the numbers one over here, they are occurring three times consecutively. After that, the number changes to two and it changes back to one. So this is not consecutive. And then it changes back to two and so on. So the only occurrence that we need to identify is the first occurrence of these three one characters so it's a pretty simple query that we need to write now one approach that should be coming to our mind while trying to attempt this problem is to use the windows function lead and lag because we are ultimately comparing between the previous and the next records of the current relative to the current row so the lead and lag functions are the ones that can be helpful in solving this query and as you will see it makes this query super simple to write so let's get started so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and select all the columns which i need from this table so i want id i want number and now i'm going to calculate the previous record to the it relative to the current row relative to the current row so i'm going to use the lag function for the previous record so lag so leg of this column number and we're going to order by the id because that is an auto incremented column so order by id as leg num and then i'm going to calculate the lead as well so lead num over order by id again as lead now from our table logs so now if we just go ahead and execute this query these are the results that we are going to get so let's go to the first record in the first record the current rows value for the column number is one there is no lag value because this is the first record in the table in terms of ordering by id which is what we have specified over here and the lead value is one because the next value in the row is one now if we go to this particular record the third record you will see that the lag value is one because the previous records value is one and the lead value over here is two because the next records value is two so now what we wanted to do was to identify that there are three consecutive records so the approach that we are going to take is we are going to compare the value of the current record with the lag value if it is equal to the lag value and at the same time it is equal to the lead value if that is the case then that means that there are three consecutive records so this will be true as you can see 
in case of row number two so as soon as you go to row number two the value of number which is the current rows value will be compared to the lag number value which is one which is the same and the lead number value which is again the same so this means that there are three occurrences as we can see because the three row values are now in the same row using the lead and lag functions so these as soon as these three values become equal we know that there have the number has occurred three times consecutively now if we go down below i don't see any other row which has all these three values equal so it has not occurred again three times consecutively so let's go and put this condition in our query so i'm just going to write with uh, let's just call it numbers as let's make it a cte and now i'm going to write a query selecting the data from this table and applying the where condition where we are going to check all these three values so we can just say select star and we have to give we have given the name cte as numbers so select star from numbers where number is equal to like number and number is also equal to lead number now if i execute this query i am going to get the result so there is one number one occurs three times consecutively okay because i've done a select star so in this case we can remove the select star and just say id and num because these are the actual columns from the table so we only what so we only want those two in the output even id does not make sense so you can just remove the id portion as well and just the number column can be selected so this was pretty simple as you can see if you're just aware of the windows aggregate functions using lead lag you can easily compare between the previous row and the and the next row now you would be thinking that this solution would work only if you need to compare between lead and lag values so if three consecutive numbers have to be found this approach can be taken but let's say i want to find that there should be 10 consecutive occurrences of the same number then we can cannot keep on comparing between lead and lag in this fashion we cannot keep on comparing between the 10 rows using this approach so that takes us to the next approach and the next problem statement so the next problem statement is to find out how many times the numbers appear consecutively so now going back to our table this is the data in our table what i want in the output is i want to say that the number one appears three times then number two appears one time then number one appears one time and then number two appears two times so i want the output in this fashion so let's see how we can achieve this so the approach we are going to take here is again using the windows function we are going to use the row number function so what we are going to do is we are going to identify a group for these numbers so this is going to be the first group because the number one appears three times as soon as the number changes it becomes two this becomes the next group as soon as the number changes again it becomes the next group and so on so every time a, a number a subsequent number changes in the data i'm going to change the group and now after identifying the group i'm going to just perform a count of the occurrences in that group and that should be giving me how many times the same number appears so to identify those groups the first step is to group by the value in this number column so i'm going to group by this number column and then i am going to generate a row number on the grouped by data so let's take it step by step so that it is easier to understand so first is your id it is already uh, in an ordered manner because it's an auto increment field if you do not have it then we can still go ahead and do a row number over and order by the id column as row number id it's going to give us the same values as id because id is an auto incremented identity column 
Now, in case it is not, you can use this approach to identify the row number. The second row number that we are going to calculate is going to be on the value of the column number. So I'm going to partition by number and order by ID. So if you partition by number, which is basically you are grouping on the value of number. So for the value of one, I'm ordering by ID as well, and a row number will be calculated. So we'll we'll just run this query and see what is the output from this statement. So it becomes very easy to understand. So let's also select our columns, ID and number, so that it becomes easier for us to understand. I'm just going to execute this query. So once I've executed this query, uh, okay, let's give it a name and alias. Let's say row number based on number column. So let's execute this. What you would be able to see is, let's look at these first four records. So all the records with value of number as one have been grouped together, okay? The first is same as the ID column because it's just a row number based on the ordering of the ID column. There has been no grouping in this. So irrespective of what is the value of number, the ID would be a sequential value. The second is the row number generated after grouping on the value of number one. So for the value one, there would be a set of row numbers generated. As soon as the value changes to two, there would be another set of row numbers generated. So what we can see over here is that for this value of one, these four records, the row number have been generated as one, two, three, four. If I go back to the row number based on ID column, they are not consecutive IDs. So it gives me an idea that if I subtract the first row number and the row number based on partitioning on the number column, then I'm going to get a difference in value over here. That difference in value is my final group that would be generated. So I'm just going to add, just use these two row number that we have calculated. And we are going to subtract and I'm going to call it as final group. So now if I'm going to execute this query, you will see that I have got four different final groups. Now let's just add order by ID because it makes it a little confusing to understand. So I'm just going to order by ID. So this is your actual data in the order in which it appears in your table. So whatever group number has come up is basically the difference of the row number generated by ordering just based on ID and the row number generated by ordering within the group created by the number column. So, so what you need to observe over here is that whenever there is a consecutive occurrence of the same number, the group would be the same. Why the group is the same? Because the difference between the ID and the ID generated within that group of number is going to be the same. So six minus two is going to be four, seven minus three is also going to be four. So if I go ahead and remove this order by ID to understand that better, let's look at this group of one value. So there are four rows for this value of number, which is equal to one. Now in the ID column, if you go and see, the ID, if we order by ID, we have seen that the ID is a continuous number sequence. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. But why is there a gap over here after between three and five? It is because the value between three and five for ID equal to four was not equal to one. It was equal to two. That's why there is a gap. So we can identify this gap and then use it to create our logic. So once we have these groups identified, what we need to do is simply 
uh, okay let me first comment these two other columns which we do not need so i'm just going to put this again within a cte let's say consecutive numbers as this particular query so this becomes our cte and then we can just select the values from here so what i'm going to do now is select what do what all do we have we have id and number so i just want number select id select number and count star from consecutive numbers that's the cd name and group by this final group value that we have derived over here so final group value that is what we are going to group by and also number now if i'm going to execute this query then this is the result that you are going to get the number one appears three times then the number one appears one time number two appears one time consecutively and it also appears two times consecutively so this is exactly what we needed and this is a query that can help us to achieve that so here we there are two things that we need to know we need to know the windows functions can be used so row number function again a very powerful function that can be used and we just need to work a little bit on the logic on how we can approach this problem and try to find the consecutive numbers and we can create a sort of grouping uh, for them and then perform a count within that group now obviously there are other approaches also possible to address the same problem so if you want to share any other approach then please feel free to comment in the comment section below and if you found this video useful then please do subscribe to our youtube channel and also like comment and share this video thanks a lot for watching